Hello, welcome to Neoscribe. In 4500 BC, in a small village located in what is now Plojnik, Serbia, Neolithic Vinca metallurgists produced the first known example of our species' first technological breakthrough, bronze. Bronze, being a much stronger material, replaced stone throughout Europe by around 3100 BC, ending the Stone Age that lasted over 3 million years. This was made possible by the unique characteristics of tin. Bronze is an alloy, meaning it is a material made of multiple metals. An ancient bronze was copper with around 6 to 10% tin mixed in. This made the material much stronger than copper or tin on their own. You see, the atoms in all pure metals take the form of repeating lattice structures. This causes pure metals to have areas of weakness called slip planes. And when a strong enough force is applied to the metal, the atoms along the slip planes move, which is why metals are moldable. But when you mix in tin with copper, the tin acts like a mortar and reinforces copper slip planes, making it a harder material. Tin's low melting point of 231 degrees Celsius allowed it to be accessible to the people of the Neolithic period compared to iron with the melting point of over 1500 degrees Celsius. So it is because the characteristics of tin that one of the most historically important alloys ever known was possible. Iron eventually replaced bronze as the dominant material, but the story of tin's contribution to society has two remaining highlights. And this takes us to 1795, to the French Revolutionary Wars. During this time, French troops were fighting battles in Italy, Germany, and all the way in the Caribbean, and providing stable sources of food for soldiers became a challenge. The French government, led by Napoleon, created the Food Preservation Prize, which offered 12,000 francs to anyone who could improve the process of preserving food. This ultimately led to Peter Durand's patent for the tin can. The first cans were made from steel or cast iron and were plated with tin because of its corrosion-resistant properties. Tin does not react to oxygen, and even when tin does corrode, it forms a hard oxide layer that prevents further corrosion. Rust on iron and steel, on the other hand, is permeable to water and air and keeps corroding the material. The invention of the tin can may seem simple today, but it revolutionized how we preserve food and tin played an essential role. Now, we fast forward to the release of the original iPhone in the summer of 2007. As we all know, that device revolutionized how we interact with computers, information, and how we even interact with each other. Indeed, touchscreen technology plays a huge role in that revolutionary experience. The properties of tin are harnessed with every tap, swipe, and pinch conducted on touchscreens all around the world. Tin is a part of an extraordinary compound called indium tin oxide, or ITO. ITO is unique because it possesses two qualities needed for touchscreens. One, the material has to be transparent so that light from the LEDs can pass through. And two, the material also needs to be highly conductive so that it can facilitate an electric field. When you tap on a touchscreen, the ions in your finger disrupts the electric field and is precisely registered by the sensor apparatus. Materials like ITO that are both transparent and highly conductive are scarce. It all boils down to its electric band structure. The electrons and atoms orbit its nucleus at various distances based on energy levels. These are called orbitals. Orbitals are like steps on a ladder in the sense that it takes energy for electrons to climb from one level to the next, but cannot maintain its orbit in between the levels. As atoms bond together and form molecules and solid materials, the orbitals of each atom overlap with one another, forming valence bands and conductive bands. The electrons in the valence band are bound to their respective atoms, however the electrons in the conductive band are free to move around, and the space in between the bands are called the energy gap. The larger the gap, the more energy it takes for electrons from the valence band to move into the conductive band, making it a good insulator like glass and diamonds. Naturally, the smaller the gap, the more conductive the material. In metals, for instance, the valence and conductive bands actually overlap. And it's not a coincidence that solid insulators like glass and diamonds are transparent. You see, for a solid to be transparent, its energy gap needs to be larger than the energy in visible light. Indium oxide has an energy gap wide enough to be transparent, and ITO is formed by replacing about 10% of the indium atoms in indium oxide with tin atoms. 
This process is called doping and it amazingly allows ITO to be almost as conductive as metals at the same time maintaining the energy gap for transparency. This is because each tin atom naturally has one more electron than an indium atom, so doping indium oxide with tin adds electrons to the material. Tin has played an essential role throughout history. Its low melting point contributed to the end of the 3.4 million year Stone Age. Its corrosive resistant properties allowed for a revolution in food preservation. Its conductive properties enabled us to access cyberspace with our fingertips. And its story proves to be another example of why chemistry is awesome. Alright, that's all I have for now. If you have an element or a compound you would like to see me cover in a future video, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.